Welcome to the GWatch tutorial. I will show you how to use GWatch, an online dynamic real-time genome browser designed to discover, view and assess gene association hits from genome-wide association studies and also from whole genome sequencing datasets. GWatch is available on gen-watch.org. The front page contains several starting links. They are What GWatch does a brief narrative text that highlights the applications of GWatch that we can imagine. Toward the bottom of the page there is an audacious list of the four main applications of GWatch. First, GWatch automates gene association search and discovery analysis. Second, GWatch offers automatic display of results from Manhattan plots to two-dimensional and three-dimensional snapshots piloted to a dynamic chromosome highway browser. 3. GWatch allows real-time validation and replication of candidate and discovered genes from other sources, abrogating von Perotti penalties. And fourth, GWatch offers a plausible solution to privacy constraints on unabridged data sharing and release. The features of GWatch section this is an explicit listing of the principal output formats of GWatch. I shall mention a few. A large unabridged table of p-values and quantitative association statistics or QAS for a given GWAS dataset. QAS is a general term for the statistics showing strength and direction of association, which lumps together such values as odd ratio, relative hazard and so on. Manhattan plots for any test that is performed. Visual snapshots in two or three dimensions which illustrate the p-values and QS for a chromosomal region where we see an association hit. A polarized option that colors the QS bars according to direction of the linkage disequilibrium of the index SNP with any adjacent SNPs. A moving dynamic chromosome highway browser, which we will see in a moment. A detailed 10 plus page tracks report for any SNP showing unabridged curves, graphs and tables for all gene disease association tests. Finally, an automatically generated list of strongest association hits based on extreme p-values, QAS or density of p-value signals in a chromosomal region. There is a tutorial section, which is what you are viewing right now. Active dataset section is the heart of GWatch. This portal contains the chromosome highway browser, search tools and all the useful stuff GWatch was built for based upon the open access datasets that users have uploaded and released into GWatch. Today we have three HIV AIDS resistance datasets in here for illustration of discovery and even instant replication for a large cohort GWAS meta-analysis produced at NCI NIH. We shall take a look at this in a moment. The login button is, is for inspecting new datasets that are not yet open access and are password protected. This reminds me to say that GWatch will accept data from any large GWAS or whole genome sequencing study. There are about 1000 GWAS published to date and we, ho we hope that many of these will try and embrace the utility of GWatch for studying all sorts of human disease and other traits beyond that. The GWatch paper link points to the publication that describes GWatch in detail, illustrating its utility by example with the HIV AIDS genetic resistance GWAS meta-analysis. Upload dataset is a step-by-step how-to instruction for uploading your own new datasets, setting a password to protect your privacy and getting started viewing your data as well. GWatch is versatile. It can be used for any GWAS, whole genome sequencing, disease or gene-based phenotype. Contact us for support. This section lists the contact details of the GWAS developers at the Dobzhansky Center in St. Petersburg. We all want GWAS to be used widely and we are happy to help you to get started. So please feel free to contact us for questions and assistance to get you going. Okay. That's my brief introduction, so now let's take a look, or should I say a ride along the chromosome highway that GWatch would offer. The entry into this is the Active Datasets tab. This page lists three big GWAS datasets labeled A, B and C 
which are currently available in GWatch. The first, Module A, genotypes 1527 people at risk for AIDS using the Affymetrix 1 million SNP genotyping array. 123 different association tests were run. If we click List of Tests section, we will see a group of tests described and linked to an instant Manhattan plot for any single test. For example, test number 34 is a survival analysis assessing genetic influence on the time it takes to develop AIDS pathology among HIV infected people. We see immediately a series of very high p-values on chromosome 2, indicating a genome-wide significant hit. This means that the top SNP is so strongly significant that it remains significant even after genome-wide Bonferroni correction for the 700,000 SNPs genotyped after quality control filtering. To go further, click one of the SNP dots. Let's pick the most significant one. This puts us immediately into the chromosome highway in the exact region of the SNP with the big signals. The highway view visualizes p-values, height of the bars. For not just the test number 34, but all 123 tests that we have performed. GWatch also displays the test SNP p-values for more than 50 SNPs upstream and downstream of the index SNP we picked with a click a moment ago. To get a context of where we are, hover the mouse over one of the tall bars and a hover box appears that lists the SNP, the test, minor allele frequency, chromosome coordinates, p-value, QAS and links to dbSNP or UCSC human genome browser. As you can see, the gene region here is part 3b, a well-known AIDS resistance gene. As you can see, just barely unless you zoom, the name of all the tests representing different stages of AIDS along the x-axis. The adjacent SNPs are ordered on the long axis. You are looking here at around 20,000 SNP test combinations results in the static view. Your brain can handle this ok, we think it's a lot easier to perceive than a table of 20,000 numbers. Let's now go back to the active datasets page and look at the module B with 4462 Caucasian study participants. Now that you have seen all the results are already computed and awaiting your inspection in GWatch, we can use the search options to find the greatest or biggest hits. These we can search for in the top hits section in one of the datasets. The options here focus in on the details of the search for hits. For example, search for p-values, QS or density and which stage of the disease to search. Let's select here the negative log of the p-value, which is the default option. When I click submit button, a table of ranked negative log of p-values is produced including details about the SNP hit, its location, minor allele frequency, gene name, rank of various parameters and a link back to highway. Let's look at the third hit in the CCR2 gene. CCR2 is interesting to us because CCR2 is a known AIDS restriction gene and is adjacent chromosomally to the better known CCR5 Delta 32 gene mutation. Click the link, put puts us back to the chromosome highway visual which we can inspect at our leisure. You can see that this region of high interest shows lots of high p-values. The watch can make quick snapshots suitable for printing or publication of the current selected region. Simply click the two-dimensional snapshot button in the snapshots tab for a 2D heat plot of the currently visible region. The top entries on the horizontal axis list the 144 tests that GWatch performed in this dataset. The vertical axis lists 100 adjacent SNPs in the region of the association heat. The color intensity indicates minus log of p-values, C scale at the bottom. A 3D snapshot is just as quick. In this case the axes are the same but the p-values rise from the surface so high towers are extremely low p-values. The color intensity reflects the strength of the QAS and the color itself reflects disease direction associated with the minor alleles testing. So red is bad, which is more susceptible to HIV AIDS, QAS more than one. While green is good, resistant to HIV AIDS, AIDS QAS less than one. The colors are often mixed red and green together 
in these three snapshots due to mathematical artifact. This is because at first we only called the minor allele for direction of the phenotype, bad or good. But we easily fix this mathematically with the polarized option, which inverts QS values between SNPs in negative linkage disequilibrium. That is, when minor allele at one SNP tracks the major allele of the nearby SNP. See the paper for more detail and a more precise explanation of the polarized option. Anyway, if you're really interested, click the 3D polarized button, which adjusts the colors, reflecting QS values according to the polarity of linkage disequilibrium of the markers in the region. Now, let's return to the active datasets page. We can also search for hits, not only by top P values, but also by maximal QS for all stages of AIDS or by, sele by selecting just one stage, such as HIV infection tests only. GWatch also introduces a new search parameter called density. Here we simply search across the GWatch chromosome highway surface for regions that have a high density of towering p-value bars. So by selecting a particular disease stage or all disease stages if we want, uh, window size say 10 SNPs upstream and downstream, GWatch finds regions of the genome that display extremely high density of low p-values for a group of tests and adjacent SNPs. GWatch first produces a table of the dense regions with rank values for density, p-value and QS. GWatch can also generate a Manhattan plot of the density regions around every SNP and identify a dense region like CCR5. You can click on the chromosome 3 hit, which is CCR5, or click on other regions of equal or higher density that become putative hits for association. If you prefer, you can also simply hit the link on the search table to visit the region of the highway that looks interesting due to high density. Now that we have seen some of the features of GWatch, we shall return to the three modules and look at the dynamic features. Let's go to the GWatch Highway Chromosome Browser. I want to show you the cool part of GWatch, which is the moving browser adapting a software tool used in video games to fly across individual chromosomes and look down from a helicopter view over the skyscrapers landscape of the association test results. I'll also show you how to get it at the primer date itself once you become enamored with a region that has a putative heat. First, let's scroll down the chromosome 3 and see what the landscape looks like. You begin to see random peaks all over that are largely statistical noise. Our challenge is to discern the real signals from this constant ever-present noise. We can stop someplace and see that this looks like a region of no real association but rather random noise. Or we can stop at region with a cluster of p-value peaks. Another way is to input a gene name, an RS number or a chromosome coordinate to direct GWatch to preconceived region. Let's try this for CCR5 on chromosome 3. We search for RS333, the causal SNP, and Javach takes us to this region. The high density and color is provocative, and we believe most of the signal results from the CCR5 influence on, on the stage of AIDS affected by CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. As anywhere else, we can produce snapshots and polarize if we like. We can also produce detailed tracks report that illustrates all the unabridged curves, tables and statistics for each of the 132 tests we ran. GWatch computes this in real time, it takes several seconds. We are almost done, but I want to show you how we can inspect regions we hear about in the loaded dataset rapidly to see whether our data show replication, validation or not. To do that, let's go back to the chromosome list. Click on chromosome 1 and search for the gene PROX1, a gene we know affects AIDS progression. Here we can inspect the regions, produce snapshots, tracks reports, polarize and all that rather quickly. This particular case looks like replication. Think of this as you have loaded your Alzheimer's dataset into GWatch and then go to a conference. Somebody presents a report on a functional connection of a new protein with Alzheimer's disease. You open GWatch, search for the gene and see if your Alzheimer dataset shows any genetic association before the person finishes his talk. This is GWatch in a nutshell.
As you can see it has a number of features and the best way to get familiar with them is just to go to GWatch homepage and navigate the powers and potential of GWatch. We are still in the beta testing phase of GWatch, so we welcome your suggestions, bug detection, criticism and impressions. Our emails can be found in the contact us section on the main page. We are also happy to help you in the visualization of your own data. Please bear in mind that GWatch is applicable not only to the GWAS or whole genome sequencing association data, but to any data that correlate with genome location. So if you think you can use GWatch in your work, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for your time and your interest in GWatch. This was GWatch Introduction, narrated for you by Anton Sweeten.